morning. <laughs> it's a good morning. But it is challenging. How do you handle challenges? Do you freak out if your morning routine is upset? Do you fumble when your apple cart gets knocked over? Do you stumble when things just don't go quite the way you thought they would? Well, welcome to the club. <laughs> it's called humanity. You see, we live in a fallen world and some days you might not wake up. <laughs> You'll be in heaven. Cool. But other days, your routine may not be always the same. And you need to adapt to that and realize and recognize that God isn't always going to give you the same things every day that you thought you could get away with. But that he may cause the winds to blow, the rain to fall, the earthquake to come, the tornadoes, the snow, the rain, the sleet, the hail, the flood, all those things. Or allow them to happen in your life so that you would either stand the storm, like Jesus said that a house built upon his sayings would be able to stand in that day of tribulation, but also that you might be able to be aware that not everything is going to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because the only one like that is God. And you're not. Neither is this world. Everything in this world is passing away. You know, if you're as old as I am, you recognize that. You start going, what happened? I got old. I feel young inside. I think. I think. Do I think? <laughs> but everything is passing away. There's a time and a season for everything in life. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to get old, a time to be young, a time to be foolish, a time to be smart, a time to be wise. And as we see time winding down, a time to be sober and serious. Life isn't going to remain the same. It's going to change. There are things that are going to happen every day that will definitely throw you for a loop. For me, today, man, I've had like some real out of left field things thrown at me. Yesterday, they shut down my Facebook account. And I thought, well, that's interesting. So I kind of worked with it, you know, and kind of did some things, you know, and got it solved. It was like, cool, that's all that. Then I went back to it, you know, and kind of today was cruising along, all of a sudden, boom, they shut down my Facebook account. And I went, okay, what's going on here? Something's wrong. And they say it's on their end this time. So I'm kind of going, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Two days in a row makes it kind of interesting. So it kind of threw me for a loop. So I adapted, you know, and I kind of worked this and worked that. I kind of tried to work around it. And couldn't work around it. It was like, well, okay, I guess maybe they've they've got it either covered or they're just kind of like shutting me down here. <laughs> so we'll see. But praise the Lord, you know, we all have challenges in our life that we have to deal with. And how you deal with those challenges really makes up your relationship. Because a lot of people think that when they fall in love, they marry the person they love and they automatically have a happy life. Well. Not really, because you see, marriage is a covenant. And if God treated his covenant of salvation like we treat marriage, we'd all be in trouble. Because a lot of people have a misconception of what marriage is. It's a contract, and you're breaking your contract sometimes. And I've broken mine, or had mine broken for me. <laughs> sometimes people do it to you, as opposed to you doing it to them. But regardless, you learn from that experience, don't you? You learn how to take better understanding of things that you sign, the paperwork that has details you didn't pay attention to, the requirements that were in the fine print. God does that with us daily. He wants us to read the fine print. 
He wants us to study to show ourselves approved. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He wants us to find our to-do list. You know, to-do. You didn't know you had a to-do list? Yeah. Every day God has a to-do list for you. You know, it's not a honeydew. It's a you do or die. <laughs> because in the day that you sin, the soul shall surely die. Well, if you don't do your do list with God, you start to die spiritually. You know, like every day read your Bible. Oh, that's on my do list? Yeah. Every day talk to God? Ooh, that's on my do list? Yeah. May I add, listen to God too? Ooh, we got to do that too? Ugh, I'm not so good at listening, you know. I like to go do my thing, you know. Yeah, well, that's kind of why, you know, that's on your do list. You see, every day there are things that you could do without, but when you do, then you do them without God. He'll watch. He'll be patient. He'll be long-suffering, and he'll give you the opportunity to go do what you want to do and be there at this point in time anyways for you to cry out and call out. But you see, there's a time coming soon that you'll cry out and God won't answer. You'll call out and God won't be there. And then what are you going to do? You see, not everyone's going into rapture. Somebody's got to be left behind. Will you quit being a Christian if you get left behind? Will you quit being a Christian if you don't feel like one? Are you a Christian because you go to church and if the church burns down, will you still be there for the people that will possibly go there? When the pastor drops dead, will you stand up and take his place to minister to people? Or the elder, or the deacon, or the Sunday school teacher, or the person sitting next to you? Me? The times, they are changing. What do you do when things don't go the way you thought they would? What happens when life isn't the way you thought it would be? Where do you go and who do you turn to? And then if you turn to him and he's not there, what do you do about your faith? Do you give up and walk away and quit? And say, well, that Jesus, that was a nice thing, you know, it's kind of like, it was good for a while, but, you know, now that I'm not getting my, you know, like, rock star status, now that I'm not one of those, like, you know, head honchos on stage, you know, well, I didn't agree with the pastor, so I'm out of here, you know. And by golly, you know what? It was just a little too confronting, and I don't like it, so I'm not doing it. What do you do in the end of the world? Because you're facing that today. You are living in the last generation. You are the last good example of what God is doing in humanity. In this age of grace, as it is fading away and slowly slipping and sliding into condemnation, we're finding that people really aren't quite up to snuff when it comes to the challenges they're going to face. You see, God is going to pour out his wrath upon the world. Now, you don't have to be involved in that, but Jesus said some would, that they would be cast into the hour of temptation, that they would go into the great tribulation, that they would actually exist in that time and overcome. Because the church, when people say, oh, well, God will not pour out his wrath upon the church, but it's gone. Well, no, the bride is gone. But in the letters to the seven churches, there's still churches in the Great Tribulation. So, that whole argument that you've heard people say, maybe you better pray. 
and learn it your way with God one on one because today you may find yourself reading in the book of Revelation letters to seven churches and say you know I'm in that lukewarm church and I don't think I'm going into tribulation or I don't think I'm going into rapture and God may be telling you something there what do you do when it doesn't work out the way you want it to will you walk away will you stay with Jesus will you learn your lessons well and in his timing he will tell us what to do where to go and what to say We all make those declarations, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord when it's easy. Everything that may abide the fire, you shall make it go through the fire, and it shall be clean. The Lord your God proves you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. He shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. I will turn my hand upon you and purely purge away your dross and take away all thy tin. I will melt them and try them. Thou, O God, hast proved us. Thou, O God, hast tried us. As silver is tried, we went through the fire and we went through the water. But thou brought us out into a wealthy place. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee, but you shall be tried. We being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. Put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed by the spirit of your mind. And put on the new man, which is after God, is created in righteousness and true holiness. You are dead, and your life is hid with Jesus and God. As Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Likewise, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Whatsoever it is that the Lord our God chooses to do with us, that he will do. Now, if we work with him and participate with him, then we will accept his will for us. And the will of God is this, that you should know Jesus Christ and know God the Father. And that is his will for us. Whatever it takes, and think about that, whatever it takes, crucifying even this body of flesh we live in, meaning we die physically, are you willing to pay the price? Jesus said that if they have done so to the Master, they would do so unto you. And he did warn his disciples. And of twelve, eleven died. And one lived a long life. You can lay your odds on the fact that you will probably not go in the rapture or be spared all these things that are about to come upon the world. You may die before them. You may get annihilated in one of the catastrophes that come along but as long as we have faith in God we can pass through the fire we can pass through death we can pass through life without being annihilated spiritually we can move from here to there 
without a care in the world. For it matters not whether living or dying, but that Jesus in us will bring us to the Father with exceeding joy. So, how are you dealing with life and circumstances in your life? How are you handling the trials and tribulations that come into your life? Are you rebuking them from the devil or accepting them from God? You shall be tried as if by fire, and for some, even in the midst of the fire. No one is spared. No one. We all go through tribulation. Jesus said, In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And since he has overcome in all that he went through, when we read about it, it's pretty phenomenal if you really look at it. Forty days in the desert, being tempted of the devil. No food, no water. Hmm. I don't know about you, and I don't know about me. I know I have been tried in the past and tried in the future. But I know today, I choose to walk in a humble way with my God. To say, Lord, help me when I am weak. Encourage me when I am strong. Guide me in the way that you would have me to go. And keep me safe from harm. For to thee I lift up my soul. And I rest my spirit in you. For surely, O God, as you have created me and cause this day to be made in your image by the likeness of your son Jesus. May it be I find peace with you and hope and joy in the love you have for me. And more than that I can't say, for the rest is God's will.